He was on the ground in Afghanistan as the U.S. pulled out after nearly 20 years there. This past week, these images won the prestigious Pulitzer Prize. Marcus Yam uh, joins us now live. Congratulations. And uh, you are, you're local. You're, you're Los Angeles Times, right? Correct. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, congratulations. Let's first talk about the fact that you won this. This is your very first year as a foreign cor correspondent, nonetheless. What does this award mean to you? It's, it means a lot. It, it, I mean, it's cliche to say, but um, it's about the hard work that uh, not just I, but also the people, um, the staff that supported us, my editors, you know, um, my coworkers, and, you know, all the Afghans that we worked with. Um, we cannot do our jobs, you know, without our local counterparts on the ground, too. So we this this award is is huge and also highlights you know the importance and you know the of you know of this moment i mean it was a 20 year war and um and it was i don't i mean it's 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 uh i'm getting emotional just thinking about it but it's a 20 year war and it was uh, it was how do i say this um it was a, a, a historic moment, I would say. Mm. Um, it was a very sad one. Yeah, well, as, as a proud subscriber of the LA Times, uh, I, I've been wa watching your work for so long and, and so moved by your pictures also on, on Twitter and, and Instagram. And uh, if you would, uh, we'd love to put up some of the pictures and maybe you can sort of walk us through what you were looking for, your process, what's happening in this moment. Um, these are some of those pictures that won that big award. I think when I arrived, I uh, arrived the day before the fall, and when the fall happened, so many Western media were, were evacuating, and, and one of the things that we, I told my editors that I wanted to do is I wanted to continue to remain, and I wanted to continue to commit to this coverage. I mean, it was an important moment for not just Afghanistan, but also the United States, because, you know, we had gone in, you know, post 9-11 to look for Osama bin Laden, but then, the, you know, the conflict had turned into a nation building war and then later turned, you know, that later evolved into this 20 year forever war. Um, as we, and as we pulled out, I mean, it was, it echoed of like, you know, the previous conflicts like in Vietnam um, so it was important that, you know, I told my editors it was important that we stay and we tell the story of the everyday Afghans who have to pay the price of this. I, I am, would love for you to talk about what it is when you're there in the mi midst of all of this, of this chaos. I mean, that, that photo of, that you snapped of that child and the anguish on the face. What is it that makes a picture uh, what it is? What are the elements that you're looking to capture there? I think the mission, the mission of photojournalism at the end of the day, I mean, for what we do um, in, in this coverage was we wanted to capture, you know, the realities on the ground, but also give you know, meaning and, uh, you know, meaning to, and, and dignity to suffering. Um, you know, it, it's so easy to swoop in sometimes and as, as journalists uh, to just photograph pain and grief and, uh, but it's so hard to, to capture it in a dignified way. Mm. Uh, one of the things that was so extraordinary about your reporting on that trip in particular is there was all that rush to get the Americans out. Mm -hmm. And you stayed, mm -hmm. you stayed behind as the Taliban was moving in and getting all of the leftover stuff from the military, from the US, you were there. Mm -hmm. Talk about what that was like. It was incredibly difficult and incredibly scary at the same time. Nobody knew what the Taliban was going to do. Um, I. I mean, I made a calculated guess, and but I also made a, a you know, a, 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 you know, 
my editors wanted to pull me out every day. <laughs> I had to fend, you know, fight them off, and I had to reason with them to not yank me out of that coverage. Um, and I'm glad they didn't. And it was also hard because, you know, um, it was hard to get resources into the country. I mean, I ha I was lucky enough because I I, I I had my fellow colleague, Nabi Bulos, our Middle East correspondent, who joined me in there and reinforced our coverage. Um, but it, it was incredibly scary. And at the same time, it was like walking into the unknown every day. Well, we know, thank goodness, you made it home safely. That was almost a year ago, but only to return to another war zone. You went to Ukraine where you spent You've been spending a lot of time. We know that this all broke out late February. Talk if you could, if, I know we have some images from Ukraine as well, about what that is like there. I mean, there's no war like it. I mean, I've, at least for me, I've not seen a war like this in my career. This is a full-fledged war. I don't think the world has seen a war like this since World War II. And... On top of that, this is a very dangerous war. This is a, you know, at, at some points, this is a war of artillery. I mean, I've never had to dive into the ground as many times as I did, you know, when uh, you hear the whistle above your head. Um, and I've never seen so much carnage um, in, in, in just, you know, in, and the violence is, is indiscriminatory. And I would say that this is just, you know, it could blow. I, I fear that this could blow out into another long, long yeah. war. Wow. And, and one last question. After seeing that and feeling that, because you have to feel that to be able to capture the images the way that you do, how do you decompress? Mm -hmm. How do you keep hope alive? How do you keep going after that experience? To be honest with you, I... I, this is something I'm still grappling with. I'm I'm figuring it out. I'm, I'm I'm getting you know I'm being proactive. I I'm getting you know professional help. My bosses has been really good about making sure I I get some time you know to to really figure out what it is I'm seeing. But I think ultimately you know right now I I haven't had really just the you know a stretch of time where you know I can really put my thoughts down on paper, but really just keep keep my head down and keep working. I think we, I see this job as a public service and I, I want to keep going. You're a hero, you really are. I mean, all that you do with that lens, it's so powerful and you are so very courageous. Uh, Marcus Yam, thank you so much for being with us and sharing everything that you just did and congratulations again on the Pulitzer, it's amazing. Thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, and hopefully you felt the love mm. from all of the California journalists on Twitter who were so excited for you and feel like you were so deserving, and you make all of us proud. Thank you.